Hello, welcome to, um, well, my first video in a very long time. Today we're talking about one player each Premier League, well, one player your team needs to sign, specifically for the Premier League. Um, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, it's taken a while to get all the graphics going, so yeah, here we go. Um, try, trying to fill out videos a bit more, so this is it. Starting off with Arsenal, we are doing this in alphabetical order. Um, I think, you know, I've read up a bit. I've tried to look into stuff. I think Santiago Jimenez actually looks like a player Arsenal might need. Because the thing is with Arsenal right now, okay, they bought in Gabriel Jesus in um, the summer of 2022. Good player, okay, spent a good fee on him, something like 50 million around that number, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, can't quite remember. Gabriel Jesus, as a City fan, okay, I liked him, okay, I knew that he was a good player and everything, and I had a feeling that he'd be a good fit in Arsenal, okay, and to be fair, to an extent, he has fit, but I also knew that Gabriel Jesus was not a striker, he isn't a striker, okay, he's a, he's a winger, okay, he could do a job at wing, on the wing, Right. No, he can do a job at striker for a game, maybe two, you know. But he cannot... Apologies apologies for my dog. He cannot be your number one striker in the season. He can't be, because he misses too many chances, and he doesn't take... And he just doesn't even take enough chances. And when I, when I say that, okay, I mean... When he should shoot, sometimes he doesn't. I do apologise for my dog's bad way. Um... That's the problem with Gabriel Jesus. He's a good player. He's a great player. Okay? And he can work in a team. But, in my opinion, he is a winger. You ask you ask a ton of City fans that, they'll tell you the same. Okay, and has he done good at Arsenal? Yeah, he's been solid. Okay, and he's done the business to an extent. But, he is not the main guy. Okay, he won't be the guy who's, who scores you 20 goals in a season. He just won't be. Okay? That is my honest opinion on Gabriel Jesus. Um, I'm not saying I kn I'm in the know about Jesus. Can I know everything? Can you're all wrong if you disagree? It's just my opinion. Santiago Jimenez, though, plays for um, Feyenoord. 22 years old, pretty young. Okay, fits that kind of profile for Arsenal. Arsenal like going for young players. So, you know, had one of the youngest teams in the league last season and. Well, I don't think they're trying to recruit all the oldest players in the league. Let's just say that. But here, we've got Santiago Jimenez. 22 years old, so like I mentioned, very young. In 22 games this season, he's gotten, 22, he's gotten 20 goals and 5 assists. Those are very good stats, okay? Even if he is playing at Feyenoord, okay, it's not Premier League, it's not even Bundesliga or La Liga, okay, it's Eredivisie. Eredivisie is a top five league in the world though, by the way, I'd like to mention. He is scoring a lot of goals, and he's even gotten five assists, okay, which could suggest that his build-up play isn't too bad either. He's got a lot of time to, to develop, and I think Arsenal, I don't think this is ridiculous to say this, you know. Arsenal need a striker. They need one. Okay, and that's, um, they're not afraid to spend money in January. That's not the problem here. You know, last summer they um, they signed Mikhailo Mudrik. Um, no, they tried to sign Mikhailo Mudrik in January. Um, and threw 90 million at it before I believe Chelsea outbid them. By paying ridiculous money, they aren't. They aren't like against spending that kind of money, and I still think they have a lot of money to spend because they always wanted Declan Rice. They were speaking to Declan Rice in January last year. Okay, they wouldn't. So it's not just that that money from Mudrick has gone to Declan Rice. I think they had both worth. I genuinely do. I think they had enough money to maybe go for both. And plus, they might sell players in the summer to be able to afford that transfer fee. You're looking at 70 million, I think, maybe more, depending on how it goes. It is that kind of deal. It's difficult to get done in January, I understand that. 
But if Arsenal can get this deal done, you know, he's got add no injuries as well, which only helps out. And three yellow cards isn't bad either. But if they can get this deal done, they, they could have the finisher that they need in this team, that they need in that Arsenal team. Now then, I jump on to Aston Villa. Okay, um, I had a look at their team whilst making this video. And I saw that they didn't have a proper... No, not proper. They didn't have a... They have Konza playing right back in the moment. I'm pretty sure Matty Cash can play there too. They've probably got a couple of other players or something that can slip into that area. But the bottom line is Villa are becoming a top side. Okay? And that means they're going to need the money. This board has got to back Unai Emery. I'm a big fan of Unai Emery. He's a brilliant manager. He absolutely bossed City. I haven't seen a team boss City like that in a long, long time. Don't You don't just need to ask City fans that. Ask rival fans that as well. Villa absolutely bossed us, and I'm not afraid to say it. Dumfries, very good on the attack. You know, he's got six goal contributions this season in... Um, in 18 games, that's a goal contribution every three games, which isn't too bad for a fullback. He has had two injuries this season, and with eight games missed, so that's obviously not ideal. But hopefully, that's the worst of it. And if managed correctly, you could have a proper good asset on your team. Um, his transfer value is 30, 30 million, and so considering that this is a January transfer, uh, no, yeah, the January transfer, I think. Inter will probably want a bit more so they can find a replacement if there was if there was to be a deal struck. Fifty million, I wouldn't be surprised. Remember United are interested in this guy, and this is one way to um to jump the gun a bit. Denzel Dumfries is a good player and one that I think Villa could probably use, you know. He's good on the attack and just imagine Luca Digne and Dumfries going up the pitch, trying to trying to get goals late in the game for Villa. Late goals will be a thing for topside teams because you fight to the end to get the points, and I suspect Villa will want to do that as well. Remember, they scored a late goal on us. So that is the situation there. I think Denzel Dumfries could be the perfect fit. I'm not exactly a transfer whiz, though. You know, I don't know the financial situation at Villa, or if have they spent all their money. I'm not too sure. I'm trying to keep it... Um, as realistic as I can, but I might be unrealistic at times because, again, I don't know the ins and outs of transfer situations for different clubs. But moving on to Bournemouth, I've gone for the Qua. Uh, I don't know if I said his name correctly, Maxent the Qua. Um, but here you are, 23 years old. Uh, I remember looking at Bournemouth's team. Um, they could probably use strengthening all over the pitch. But I had a look at the team. Near the top end of the field, they're looking pretty good. Solanke's on fire. Luis Sinatra, Luis Sinatra um, is, looks like he's doing fine. And other places in the midfield seem to be co covered with Billing, Alex Scott, and a couple of other names. But I looked at the back four, and I think that they could really use improvement here. I think Fulham... Uh, I think Bournemouth are here to stay in the Premier League. I do. I think they are. Um, I questioned their decision to sack Gary O'Neill. Was that his name? Um, I questioned that decision. But it seems to be working out pretty well for Bournemouth. So fair play. You know, it takes... You know, you got you got to have a lot of nerve to sack a manager you just gave a new contract to who did very well to keep you guys in the Premier League. But they did it because they knew that this manager might be able to take them to the next step. And it seems like that is happening. So you can't knock them for that, really, can you? Um, but Lacroix, he was quite a hot topic a couple of years ago. Um, 2021, 2020 time. Quite the, quite the hot story. But seems like radars have gone down on him. Still teams looking at him and all that, but no one seems to really be... Flying in for a deal. Fellas worth 20 million. Why have I put the, the likely fee for 25 million? Because his transfer, because his contract hasn't got long left. I'm pretty sure it expires in 2025. 
might be wrong there. You might want to double check on double check on that. I'm not too sure. But 2025, I'm pretty sure that's when his deal runs out. Wolfsburg this summer and this January is really the last chance to make money on him. And maybe the fee would be more around 30 million, not too sure. But I think Bournemouth can strike a deal. If they can pull out the money, they can they can sign this guy. And I think it would be a real boost for their back line. Um, you know, he's quick and he will help you guys out a bit. 17 games, goal contributions isn't, isn't really what you want to look at for a defender. I probably should have edited that, to be honest, but hey, hey, hey we are. He's had a, he's had a couple of um, reds and um, yellows. Well, he's had one red and a couple of yellows. So that's not ideal, I guess, but every team gets a red card in the season. But yeah, the quart I think could be a good fit for Bournemouth. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Now then, next one, Brentford FC. I've gone for Brian Brobby. Okay, why would I go for Brian Brobby? Why would I go for him when Ivan Tony's just coming back from his um, suspension? You know, surely this would be a, a summer deal, a team, a deal to make in the summer. You know, why make it now? Doesn't make sense. But I'll explain my thinking to you now. Ivan Tony will not stay in the summer. He will be gone in the summer. He'll probably stay in Jan he'll probably stay in this window, he probably won't be leaving or going anywhere. But he will he will not be a Brentford player next season. I'm a firm believer of that. He's very good. And he's not too good for Brentford, but he's an extremely good player. What was it? Top three goal scorers last season. And, you know, he even got affected by the suspension there. He didn't get to fulfil the end of the season. So Ivan Tony's a brilliant player and Brentford needs to start looking at alternatives. To Ivan Tony. Ajax's Brian Bobby might be the way to go. No, I was surprised that um, his transfer value's this low, if you want the truth. I think Brian Bobby, though, would be willing to make this move happen. Um, he's a well-talented player. He has gotten 12 goals this season, 4 assists, and is just on form for um, for Ajax, it seems. i I would be surprised actually if Man United were in for him. I only say that because um, Eric Ten Hag and his relation with Ajax have got a good relationship. Um, I would be surprised if that deal happened. But but that's mainly because of Rasmus Hoyland and the player I'll bring up later. That's a bit of a spoiler for you. Uh, but Brian Bobby, 12 goals, 4 assists, 24 games. That's pretty solid. Two injuries, but only one game missed. And one of those injuries, both of these injuries, were, were barely anything. Six yellow cards, probably not ideal. That's a quarter of his games. So he's getting a yellow card every four games. Um, but I do think that this deal isn't a million miles away. Fifteen, only worth fifteen million. He is having a good year though, so that could go up. Um, and he's worth thirty-five. And no, and I think. I think Brentford will have to pay thirty five million. Now then, you're probably wondering, Brentford spending thirty five million? That's not that's kinda unheard of. I don't think that's gonna happen. But remember, summer, they went they went in for um, PSV's Bakayoko and I can't remember how much they coughed up. It was in the thirty million region though, I'm pretty sure. 30, it may have been 60, but I'm pretty sure my memory's a bit foggy there. I'm pr I know it was about 30 there. And if they can cough up at least, if they can cough up 30, okay, and then cough up a little more, offer, offer 35 million for this fella, I think Ajax might just go for it. They can they could find a replacement that got a great recruitment team. You know, you look at the 18-19 team for Ajax, which is just incredible. You know, players like De, De Jong, De Ligt, um, multiple others. That's just off the top of my head. Even Onana. You know, those are just names off the top of my head. Brian Brobby could be a smart bit of business from Brentford if they do it. Maybe I'm the one who's not being smart though here. Maybe I'm being outlandish and suggesting such a player. But 
I don't know, I think that this one is doable. Ajax are fifth in the league at the moment, which is not great by their standards. They were bottom, to be fair, so um, it's better than being bottom. But I don't know, I think that this one could could be good. Okay, and with Ivan Tony leaving, why not bring in someone now to get them used to the team and everything like that? Because at least then you've got Ivan Tony and this guy. Ivan Tony's not not going to be match fitness either. Okay, he has been training, obviously, so that when he comes back, he won't be far off. But there's still going to be some time before Ivan Tony. He's still going to be rusty. He's been out for eight months. But now then, we move on to Brighton. I'm looking at Thiago Almada. Um, again, a top player. Um, in the MLS. the All these stats, by the way, are based off the 2022-2023 season because the MLS haven't started their 23-24 season yet. Or really, their 24 season. They haven't started it yet. Sorry, guys, just need a drink. Thiago Armada. On the radar, a ton of teams and everything like that. A bunch of teams keeping their eye on him. And he will get a move, I'm sure of that. Age 22, he is very young and full of goal contributions with 29 GNA in 35 games last season. They are great stats. That's almost a goal contribution every game. So, you know, you can't deny the stats. They're good stats for him. Obviously, the Premier League is a very different place. He's not just going to walk into the Prem and start... You know, getting 30, 30 goal contributions every season. Okay, but even if he can get you 20, I think that's a successful buy. He had one injury last season and only missed one game from it, so you can't knock it there. You know, that is just, that's a good record for injuries, so you don't really need to worry about it on that regard. He's missed, um, he's gotten four yellow cards and one red, so that's not great, but, I mean, hey-ho, um... You do what you can, I guess. It was great stuff from... It's, it would be a great bit of business, I'm sure. Again, his contract hasn't got too much on it either. It might expire by the end of the year. I'm not too sure if my memory serves me right there. But I'm pretty sure by the end of the year it might expire. If not the end of the year, the end of next year. But it might be the end of this year. I can't remember. Or early 2025. I'm not too sure on MLS contracts. But I know it hasn't got long left. Which is why I've put the, the likely fee relatively low. 27 million euros. Okay. Um, I think he plays... I can't remember the team he plays for. I won't lie. Um, I'm not sure on the team name. But... They're, they're going to want money for him. I doubt they want him to leave on a free. Even if it means losing him a season early. And I think they take 35 million for him. I do, with such short time left on his contract. I looked at Brighton's team as well. I think they need a bit more of a creative player. They've got some players that can do it, but I don't know. I think a proper creative player. Just imagine this fellow who's got 16 assists teeing up Evan Ferguson, Ansu Fati, and whoever else they've got. Oh, no, Mitoma, and whoever else they've got available. I genuinely think that this could be a good buy that would take the Premier League by surprise, especially for a January signing. It's a big player to bring in and just maybe change your team entirely. Um, so yeah, I do. F I don't. I don't think that this one will happen personally. I think that they should do it, okay? Because that's what this video is—a player that your club needs to sign, you know. So. That's where I'm at with that. I think that they should do this deal. Of course they do. But if they don't, then... I don't know. Find an alternative. Brighton are very good with their business. And I also think they've got a lot of money in the bank. I think they can make this deal happen. Because think about it. I need to think about three players for why they've got tons of money. McAllister. He bought him 35 million alone. That, that technically covers him. Um, Armada, but let's just say that money went elsewhere in the window. Sanchez, that is uh, somewhere in the region of twenty to thirty million. I can't quite remember. Let, let's go to the low end and say it's twenty. So that pays for most of him. 
Okay, but let's say some of that went elsewhere. Okay, let's say 10 million of that went elsewhere. Like how McAllister's fee went elsewhere as well. Kaiseido. They broke the British transfer record with this. What was it, 120 million quid? Absolutely ridiculous, by the way. I don't think he's ever going to live up to 120 million, in my personal opinion. That's not to say I think he'll be bad. I think 80 million is what he might live up to. But I, do, I just don't see 120 million in Kaiseido. I think Brighton have done brilliantly to get that much money. So I think I think that this isn't a million miles away. I think they've got a bit of dosh left in the pocket, um, Brighton. This is definitely a deal they can do if they so wish for it. But moving on from Brighton and moving on to Burnley. It's difficult to find a, a player for teams like Burnley, Luton, um, Sheffield, teams like that, that will be financially tight and stuff like that. But I've gone for Nathaniel Phillips from Liverpool. I know he's pictured in a Celtic top there, but that's the last team he played for. Um, he came back to Liverpool in this January. Look, it's quite clear on both parties. This guy keeps getting loaned out. I don't see much point in Liverpool really bothering to keep him. Burnley, you spent almost you spent around eighty million in the summer. A big chunk of that on James Trafford, but you spent a lot of money nonetheless. And I think that you can spend a little more to help company save your team. Or maybe not even company, help someone save your team from relegation. This fella's worth four million. And you're probably getting for eight million if you want to buy him. You could just loan him in if you ain't got the funds. Liverpool will be more than willing to loan him in, I reckon, because neither parties want to stay together with Liverpool and Nathaniel Phillips. This fellow will be gone for the next season or so. You know, he got loaned out to Bournemouth a season or two ago. Just keeps getting loaned. Just get rid of him, I say Liverpool. And Burnley need a stronger back line, in my opinion. So bring in someone that will hopefully strengthen you in some shape or form. Anyway, there, we move on to our next club. We're getting on to a big one now. Chelsea. I know what you're going to say. Kind of outrageous that I'm throwing in this one. Okay, and I'm probably going to say, I don't know if what I'm about to say is controversial. Okay, but... It's probably going to um, boil some people's pots. Um, Jeremy Frimpong, you, you all know him. Um, he's had a brilliant season with Leverkusen. You know, he's just on fire. 17 GNA in 22 games as a right back, I'd like to mention. Absolutely brilliant season. I'm going to get into why this difficult is going to be. This deal is going to be difficult, but I'm also going to get into why they need to make it. He's worth 50 million. He's just signed a new contract as well. We've seen more outrageous things, though, I'd like to add, with players signing new contracts um, and them getting bought. We've seen more outrageous from this club as well. Benfica signed um, Argentinian Gem in the summer of 2022 and had a release clause on his, on his name for 120 million. The fella went in January for 120 million, and who went and bought him? Chelsea. I think that they'll be. I don't think they'll be afraid to make a deal. That Chelsea have not been afraid to make a deal since, since that new owner came in. They spend money like it's absolutely nothing, and I don't think that this deal is impossible. Chelsea will have outgoings this this window, I reckon. And they'll have incomings as well because they need them. And what are they? Like eighth in the leagues? They are. They are underachieving. Um, they need someone. And people that might mention, oh, what about Rhys James? Rhys James is one of the best right backs in the league. Yeah, when he's not injured, when he actually plays, he plays well. But Rhys James has got an awful injury record. Look, okay, there's that, there's that debate between who's better, Trent or Rhys James. I, I say Trent at the moment because if Rhys James can't even get on the pitch, then how can he be better? And no offence to Rhys James, absolutely none at all to him. I think he's a good player. 
And I think he's a good player, but his injury record is abhorrent. That's why I wouldn't want Neymar on my team. Not because he's not a bad player, but because he get he gets injured like every time he plays. Oh, <sighs> I think that Jeremy Frimpong would be an excellent bit of business from them, and I think that they should do it. Um, if they can, they need a right back. That it will happen one way or another. I know they've got Gusto. Is he a right back? I know he's there, but do you want do you want a top quality right back in now? Because this fella's charging for the Bundesliga. It will be difficult to do with Leverkusen because they're on a Bundesliga charge. But and you're probably gonna have to pay a lot of money. I don't even know if eighty million will do the job. It'll probably it may, it might be more. I'd like to say his contract runs out in 2028 I'm pretty sure that's a big deal so it's it might be more than 80 million it could be 90 maybe more I don't know I'm not a transfer whiz you know I'm just putting a number on it and what I think could get the deal done but Jeremy Frimpong if you can secure him you've got yourself a top quality attacking player anyway I'm gonna try speed it up a bit I am taking the slow route um now let me go on to crystal palace i looked at their team and i oh wait sorry i didn't change it i looked at crystal palace's team in my opinion they need a midfielder someone to just someone to just bring a bit of strength in there i bring you edison from atalanta 24 24 years old so heading into prime years he's worth 27 million don't think his contract's got long left. I think it's 2025. I might be wrong. Um, if it's not 2025, I reckon 2026. He's been at Atalanta for a good couple of years. Six, go six goal contributions in 25 games as well. Not too bad for a midfielder. Um, he's had one injury, but nothing, no games missed from it. And he's had three yellow cards, um, which isn't too bad either from 2025 from 25 games. I think that this is not impossible. They have to go into their pocket a bit. I was thinking of going for a right winger for the for these guys, but then I thought, you know, Elise's not gone yet because Elise will go. You know, I'm sure a Crystal Palace fan um, will tell you that Elise's not going to be with you forever. Sadly, he will get bought out. He's got a what 60 million quid release clause. Someone will someone will jump on that in the summer. Chelsea are still interested. Don't think City will go after him because they got Doku now. But but Chelsea interested. Arsenal will probably look at it. Um, maybe Liverpool will look at it for a replacement for um Salah because Salah's getting on. Um, and maybe even Man United if they can cough it up. But I think this guy balls to midfield, and I think if it works out, you could sell him for a huge fee in the future. guys it's taken a moment but i hope you guys are enjoying this video i know it's been a bit long but i'm trying to make it as quick as i can make it now then kyle walker peters from southampton you should know this guy he's southampton's like he's probably one of the biggest names of that club i'm surprised he's still there to be honest um 26 years of age playing in the championship after getting relegated last season with them He's only worth twenty million, but he's easily one of the most one of the biggest players at Southampton. I think I think Everton need a right back, um, because they've got Ashley Young. Ashley Young is mid thirties, maybe late thirties. Can't remember, but he's not your guy. You need someone a bit more long term, don't you? And um, who's the other fella? Seamus Coleman. Coleman. Um, I don't know if he's a sole right back, but I know he can play there, and I know he has played there. Again. He is getting on. Everton legend. No disrespect to him. But he's getting on and he needs to think about the future. Everton are having a really good season with Sean Dyche. You know, that seems to be going really well. So, fair play to yeah, I don't dislike Sean Dyche. But I think Kyle Walker-Peters would be good. He offers you goal threat. And goals is probably something you guys need. And I think it's definitely something you guys should consider as well. Because Kyle Walker-Peters... 
Look, it's not going to take a lot to get him out of the championship. You saw how much Spurs got from Madison. 40 million for him is ridiculous. But I think that this one isn't a million miles away. 28 million, I reckon you, and I reckon you get him. Um, because Southampton, they might want to hold on to him a bit more because they are in the championship and they're probably pushing for promotion as well. But it's going to be difficult for them, isn't it? Moving on to Fulham. Just gonna have a drink. Florentino. Now then, why have I suggested Florentino? Florentino is obviously playing for Benfica, relatively young, um, and I think that he will bolster. Um, sorry, my mind's gone blank here. I I do it all in one take, you see, guys. I think that he will bolster in midfield. Of it, his main his main position is centre defensive midfield. Why have I suggested the centre defensive midfield when they've got Joao Palinha, who is highly regarded as one of the best CDMs in the league? It's because he's going to be gone in maybe this January, maybe in the summer, and he's going to bring in a lot of money. And so signing this guy might not be the worst idea you know if you need you're gonna need a replacement because Rob Lee is huge for you and you'll leave a huge hole in the team so bring in this guy now develop him so that when Rob Lee does maybe leave in the summer instead of now you've got this player who's fully aware of the club and how they play okay he doesn't need a preseason because he's had it from January to May and you'll be fine with him hopefully but now, we move on um, to Liverpool. Big, big, big team, obviously. And, funnily enough, I've gone for another midfielder. Coop Mainers, you may have heard of him. Another player from Atalanta. Um, relatively big for them. Joined in, I think, 2021. And has not left the club and is still going pretty strong, I believe. It's got a deal that runs out, I think, in 2026, 2027 time. Might be wrong. Uh, but his transfer value is 40 million. He's I've gone for someone a little older here. I could have easily gone for someone like a bit younger for Liverpool. But I look at Liverpool's midfield, and I see a lot of young players there anyway. You know, Stefan Bacetic, you know, they wanted Romeo Lavia. And they've got so many young players, but no one, no one actually there to take it by the horns. I think Coop Mainers is 25, he's had good experience with Atalanta. And I think that you need a bit more experience in that midfield because nothing wrong with having young players, but you need a good mix. You do need a good mix, that's my honest opinion. His main, and Liverpool still need a number six. Look, McAllister's not a number six. Look at him at Brighton. Not a number six, and some of his worst games for Liverpool this season have been as number six. Okay, that's that's what I've seen of him, and what I've heard other Liverpool fans say as well. His best, he's best going forward, McAllister. Okay, and that's not a discredit to him. You know, it's like saying Erling Haaland is a bad defender because he, because that's not what he does. He's an absolutely amazing striker. Play to their strengths, you know, don't play to weaknesses. Coop Mainers is a centre defensive midfielder. Sorry for that. That will also go and get you a goal and an assist. He's had 10 GNA this season um, in 25 games. He can play anywhere in the midfield from defensive midfield, centre midfield, to attacking midfield. He can play anywhere across there, but his main area is defensive midfield. And I don't think Endo's the guy either. You guys wanted to spend a hundred, over a hundred million on a uh, midfielder, on a centre defensive midfielder in Kaiseido. You missed out on that, so go spend almost half of that, almost about half of that money that you're going to spend on Kaiseido, and spend it on this fella. Bring in a big player in January, like he did Van Dijk a couple of seasons ago. You have the money because I know Ryan Gravenberg cost you about thirty-eight million, but you guys were willing to spend over a hundred million. You guys should have about 60 million left. I'm a firm believer of that. 
and I think that this guy could really boost your midfield up. It, it, he, this guy, I'm not saying that this guy's going to solve all your issues. You're going to have a midfield that's playing ticky tacker football. I don't know if you even want to do ticky tacker football. Maybe a bit more rock and roll. But he will definitely help you out. I don't think Endo's the guy. Endo's a good rotational guy, but you have no one for him to rotate with, so he just naturally becomes that guy. I think that this guy could really boost you. That's all I'm saying. And again, I'm not a whiz on this stuff. I'm just kind of winging it. But from what I've seen of this guy, I've watched clips. You know, I'm not. I don't watch him every week, but I've seen clips of him before making this video, and I think that he could offer you some. Some. Uh, I think he could offer you all the good stuff. Now then, Luton, incredibly difficult to find a player for you guys, but I would bring in someone to help out that back line because you're conceding so many goals. You are scoring a couple of goals, to be fair. You need you need signings all over the pitch, you know, just like Burnley do. Um, but if I had to bring in one, bring in someone that's got a bit of know-how, that knows how to lock down a game when you're 1-0 up, and knows how to lock down a game in the biggest of circumstances too. This fella, experienced for AC Milan, he's got a Serie A under his belt. He's not, even if you were to buy him, he's not going to cost you much. I don't know if you want to join you, but maybe just bring him in on loan. Try go in for him. You need something, okay? And <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Um, this guy, he's solid and will help you, I think, that if you manage to get hold of him. Just, just to help Tyson at the back and be a bit of a leader at the back as well. He's had two injuries and ten games missed. That's not great, obviously, but back from injury, maybe take care of him a bit better, and you might have a proper asset on your team in them, Simon Kajer. So, good option for you. You know, Denmark captain. I'm pretty sure. So, I would go in for him personally, if I was losing, because losing needs something, anything to help them. Now then, we move on to my team, if you haven't gathered by now by the name, but also Manchester City. I've gone for a player that we are heavily linked with anyway, simply because I do actually think that this guy would be a good fit for the Blues. He fits the profile player, we need a creative midfielder, this guy's got decent stats um, overall for 11 goal contributions, he's worth 65 million, he's got a release clause in the summer 2024 for 85 million, I think this guy will become a City player one way or the other, I think West Ham would take 85 million now, because I think they can acknowledge that it's going to happen, or oh, they might, actually they might want a bit more, I'm actually, yeah, they might want a bit more because you you could get him for eight five million in the summer, or you can cough up a bit more money now. So actually, now that I'm looking at it a bit better, they will probably want a bit more than that. But I think City would. They had an agreement, West Ham and City. That's the thing. They had an agreement. They did. But certain stuff happened that make that de deal fall through. Not because it didn't work out on player side. Not because it didn't work out on club side. Well, actually, it was the player side. He got and there's charges for betting. I'm pretty sure only charges and allegations. Not saying that he actually did that stuff. But Lucas Paqueta, you would, you would think that he could. He wants to move as well. You know, I feel like that this deal isn't impossible. I feel like. You could definitely make something happen here, as long as you just cough up the money for it. Because he wants it, and 85 million West Ham can go find a replacement. Now then we go on to United. Something I saw of United, you're not conceding a ton of goals. Okay, that's the good thing. But you're barely scoring any either. You know, um, you got some of the lowest goals scored in the Premier League. You need goals from somewhere. This fella is injured at the moment, but I'm pretty sure it's not a terrible injury. It's a hamstring strain. Um, he's gonna, so he is injured at the moment. But I feel like if you guys coughed up the money, he would go to you in a heartbeat. Forty million transfer value, but you guys can get him for less than. You guys can get him for fifteen million quid. 
15 million quid. You're bringing in an experienced striker. He's got 22 and 21 goal contributions this season in 16 games. Once he gets back from injury, you've got yourself a proper quality striker to go with Rasmus Hoyland. You watch Mike Goldbridge. You watch um, other Man United channels. They'll tell you Rasmus Hoyland can't do it on his own. He's inexperienced. He hasn't got the know-how. This guy is, what, eight years old, like seven years older than Rasmus Hoyland. He will offer you big stuff that you will need. Um, and offer maybe even a good mentor for Rasmus a bit. And that is something you could see, a bit of mentoring. Because he needs that. He can't do it by himself, Rasmus Hoyland, you know. Rashford's not a striker either, you know. He's not a striker. He's a winger. He has to go on the wing. Seven yellow cards, not pretty in almost half of his games, but in the Premier League, that all resets, and you could probably train him to be a bit less, um, a bit less prone, a bit more prone to a yellow card. No, a bit less prone to a yellow card. But... I'm not, I don't know how to say his name, Sir How Gracie. Sorry. Um, I do think that he would solve your goal threat if you guys can at least feed him the ball. Because that is another issue. You guys need a. You guys need a few. So you guys need a few signings, but you need a striker because Anthony Martial is not going to do it. Now then, moving onwards though, onwards and forwards as it goes. Sorry guys, just bringing this up. Newcastle United, and we're almost sticking with the theme of Manchester United. We go to Dav De Gea, already getting a couple of links. It's not going to cost you a penny. He needs a club. And you don't need him for long either. Last season at Man United, he played really well, had clean sheets, um, uh, won the Golden Glove, and was Man United's first goalkeeper for the whole way. Distribution, not great, but I know Nick Pope's distribution isn't exactly like, uh, isn't it exactly like Edison's, you know. I don't think you're looking for distribution. You're looking for a decent level of distribution, obviously, and David De Gea isn't horrible at it. You know, he had a bit of training on it last season, I would have thought. So, it's got to be better than it was a couple of years ago. And he's not going to cost you a penny. You don't even need him for long. You just need him for when Nick, for until Nick Pope comes back next season. Or probably next season. He's out for four months, isn't he? Something like that. So, that's how long you're going to need him for. He can save you goals. And Newcastle are leaking goals at the moment. He had one of the best defences in the league last season. But I've just seen you concede four to Liverpool as well. Well, I've just seen it. I saw you concede four to Liverpool just over a week ago. And to be fair, that's because of the defence as well. You need a bit more. Your injuries aren't helping you. But I think a proper goalkeeper just to fill in until um, Nick Pope comes back and then you can decide what you want to do with him would give would help you out. Because I don't think Debrafka is that guy. But we move to our next club which I believe is oh, it's been so weird BAM Nottingham Forest age 26 Pedro we're 22 million plays for Flamengo um, last season this was because it works the same as MLS I'm pretty sure 35 goals, 4 assists in 61 games. Those are wild stats. Absolutely crazy stats. And those could be the kind of stats you need as well. And he's only worth 22 million. And I'm sure that he'd be open to a Premier League move. He's worth 22 million. I reckon he'd get him 30. Maybe he got a push up 35. Just imagine Morgan Gibbs White feeding this guy. And everyone else he got on that team, like Sangeri, helping out too. I think that this one would be good. You probably need a defender as well, but I think Chris Wood isn't isn't the main guy. Or shouldn't be anyway. I think that Pedro, someone that was scoring goals for fun last season, 
could be. Could be that, exactly that guy. So I, I take a roll of the dice. You're not afraid to bring in players. I know that, and I'm sure Forest fans know that based off last season, because you couldn't stop signing players um, on your first promotion back into the league. But enough of that. Is big player for you guys if you can get him. Sheffield United, terrible trying to look for a player that you guys can get. I wouldn't have thought money's too good with Sheffield at the moment. I don't believe you bought in too many players in the summer, so I don't think that's going to change. Maybe the manager will get a bit of backing in January, though. But you can really go for a loan, or you can go for a buy with this one. Danilo Pereira, not getting really valued at PSG. He's not the main guy going forward for them, but he could be for you guys. He plays centre-back, but he can also go in midfield, do CDM and just centre midfield. So he offers you a bit of versatility there. One injury, three games missed this season, so that's not terrible. He's had an assist already this season as well, so... Look, he's not, exa he's not exactly the John Stones of defenders, and he's not exactly the Rodro CDMs. But he's gonna. he offers you a bit of experience... Played for Porto, played for PSG. You think that there's something about him that can help out Sheffield United. I think PSG are willing to let this guy go. He's not a part of the future plans. May bring him in if you can't set, if you can't buy him, bring him in on loan because PSG don't want him there. He's not gonna. He's barely doing anything. I know 15 games suggest otherwise, but that a lot of that is off the bench. I'd like to add. So Danilo Pereira, I don't know if he's gonna save you from relegation. From being 20th in the league, but he he might save you a couple of goals, and that's what I'm trying to go for here. You know, you guys gotta stop conceding goals one way or another, and he could help you with that. But we move on to Martin Zubi Mendy for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, well, plays for Real Sociedad, but I think that this guy could be could be a big help. Um, in your team. Look, looks like it's Alan Hoiberg, and looks like Ben Tanker has got another injury. Not great for you guys. I don't know how long Ben Tanker is injured for either. You need, but Ben Tanker is out, and you're gonna need someone a bit younger to maybe come in and fill in the shoes. This guy's quality. Fifty million quid. It's gonna be difficult to get the deal done in January. Obviously, it is, but that's gonna be the same. Most of these players on this list. Five goal contributions in twenty-eight games. That's not why you've got him though, he's a CDM and you'll bolster up your midfield. To be fair, Spurs are already moving rapid. You're already signing areas that I was thinking about doing this video on. You signed Timo Werner to cover for the striker. I don't know if I would have picked Timo Werner, but you've you've got him now. Alright, you've covered there. You're signing a centre back. Um that was an area I was gonna do one on. But if you can't bring in the funds, just remember you're selling Eric Dyer. Hoiberg's probably on the way out. That could bring in forty million, maybe. I don't. I don't really know the values of those two, but they'll they'll bring in a good bit of money. And I suspect that Spurs have still got a bit of money in the pocket from Harry Kane. Um, maybe I'm not hundred percent sure on that. But I think he's going to cost you seventy million, maybe a bit more. Um, considering it is January, it could be more. But I'm trying to be optimistic for you guys, I guess. Bit weird to see if I'm being optimistic for you, but I'm I'm trying to put a good spin on it. I think that this guy will get a big club move. I know Bayern like the look of him, Barcelona like the look of him, Barcelona you don't need to worry about though because they can't afford anything at the moment. Um, but Bayern Munich is steep competition, but I feel if you get in now, you could you could have him a part of your team instead. Now then we move on to West Ham, familiar player, that's because it's the same player, Sirhal Gurassi, and we literally covered him a minute ago, I won't spend too much on this, but I don't think Mikel Antonio, and Mikel Antonio is a solid striker, don't get me wrong, um, but him and Danny Ings are not the way forward, this guy, you know, you could get six years out of this guy, you know, that's the thing. You get six years out of him, and then you got a lot of time to find a striker. Because Skamaka didn't work out. I think that's just kind of unlucky. Um, but this one, this one could be what you need. So, I think, same reasons as United, you need a proper goal scorer. And I know Bowen's playing a bit of striker for you at the moment, but 
he is a winger. That's where his best season was, and I think that you guys should stick true to his best season. And fill in a striker that's currently having the season of his life in that area. Because you get him for 15 million, this guy. And you'll still be, he'll still be in Europa League football, so I don't think he'll be exactly against it. Now then, we jump onto our final team, Wolves. You bought a lot of money in the summer, you didn't spend a lot of it. I know that was kind of because of um, money issues anyway. But, um, Lorenzo Pellegrini. Plays for Roma. Did get a big injury, but he's back. Um, he's only worth 25 million. And I think you get him 32. I don't think he'll cost you a ton of money. Uh, he might cost you a chunk, but I don't know. I reckon you can. I reckon you could get him if you fight for it. Um, 32 million, maybe a bit more, maybe more closer to 40. But I do think that this one is in the Wolves region. They got a lot of money for Nunes, and they got a lot of money for um, Neves. That's that bought in over 100 million alone. I understand transfer issues, but you you also um, sold other players as well on top of that. So I think you have got a bit of money. Maybe just bring in this guy. I think that you could really use a bit more creativity to help out. Um, oh, Hoanky Chan, but also what's that other guy called? Kunya, Kunya, um, and even give Neto a bit of a hand. I think you could have a really deadly front four if you sign this guy. But that concludes this video, um, sorry if it's a bit sloppy, first video since September, so yeah, can't promise that videos will be a big regular thing, but I want to make sure that I do get some in from time to because I understand the value of them. But guys, thank you all for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you want more like this, um, feel free to post it on the community tabs because I don't think comments will be on. If I could have them on, I would. But thank you all for watching. It's been fun making this, and I hope that you have fun. You had fun watching it too. And see you all next time.